Right, welcome back, guys. We are just about to get set up for mastering our final project. Um, we're not going to be doing the mastering in this project that we have, um, and I'm going to explain to you why now as we set this up. So we're going to go and create a new project. Um, they do have a mastering uh, template. Um, I've got my own set up there as well. But we'll just do a blank one for starters, um, just to kind of run through everything. Um, this is the way that I do it normally. So we're going to create a new project. Right, so uh, once again, just ignore the mic input. That's just so that I can talk to you guys over this tutorial. Um, we're going to go and uh, create, uh, actually, yeah, I'm just going to open up the pool window. Um, you can actually just drag and drop these as well, but I'll just do it from here now. Um, so this is the directory where we rendered our files to. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and select all of them and just click open. Now, um, normally I would suggest you copy files to the working directory, but since we specifically put these files there to be mastered, there's no reason to copy them again. Um, so I'm going to leave that turned off now. Um, just be aware that if you do anything to those files, that the mastering project would probably be affected. But for this case, it's fine. We'll just go ahead and do that. And you'll notice that they are not in the project uh, folder that we're working in currently. So um, let's just drag these in. Right, sorry, I'm just going to save this in uh, the same directory. We're just going to call this Sonic Academy Mastering. Um, same as our project folder. Uh, so now we have our imported files. Um, I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. So we are just going to take a look at um, how I set this up for mastering now. Um, I like to master through a group. So we're going to use our macros again. Um, go to our macro and select the tracks to folder and add group channel. We'll do this outside of folder this time. Stereo, and we'll just call this master. So the reason, uh, actually, uh, that's fine. I've accidentally just added the stereo one only. Um, we can actually do this as two separate ones. We'll just go, um, well, let's add these to a folder. There we go. And we'll call this stem. Mix. Let's just call this one master. So if we decide to do a stem mix now and a master uh, from a stem mix, we can just root these um, by going to our mixer, go to the routing and select these stem mix channels, everything except for the stereo one, and we can root those to the master group. You go, and that was shift alt uh, or shift option, and then select the group that you want to send to, and it'll do all of them at the same time. Um, the reason I do this is because now only the master is going to the stereo output, which means that I can actually go and add some more channels here. We'll call this reference one. And we'll move this outside. Um, what I do is I set up these reference channels um, to load in other tracks that I might be referencing for my master. If there's a mix that I like or I'm trying to gauge the loudness that I should be getting to, I like to have these here. And uh, these are going to the stereo out. If these were going to the stereo out and we were adding our master effects onto the stereo out, then we would essentially be affecting these references as well which are already mastered. So obviously you don't want this passing through a limiter. You want to leave those as is, which is the reason why we do the master on the master group instead, and then send this to the stereo out, which would be the default there, um, so that we're not affecting any reference material that we have in this mastering setup. So you can see uh, the stem mix, um, I'm not going to cover this too much it's just more to show you guys how to set up these buses so that you can do this if you're sending it to a mastering engineer um, generally speaking I would um, 
do a stem mix like this that you have a little bit more control over the volumes of the kick and uh, you, you know I'd be adding a little bit of extra effects on these separately before actually mastering them as a stereo file but we are just going to um, do our processing now on the actual uh, stereo uh, master and uh, we'll be rendering that to a final file so we'll go ahead and minimize that for now because we're going to be working only on this and uh, yeah I'm going to catch up with you in the next episode I wanted to just cover um, Cubase's frequency EQ in a little bit more detail and then we'll add some more uh, effects to the master channel and then finally render everything out cool so I'll catch you in the next one cheers <laughs>